Hello there, this is Jonathan from Neutronized, I am the creator of Super Cat Tales and today I'm gonna talk about how to design levels for platform games. Before starting to cover the main topic of today's devlog, I'd like to update you on the review status of Super Cat Tales 2. As you might know, Super Cat Tales 2 was completed around a month ago. I submitted the app to Apple to be approved for release, and this turned out to take way longer than I originally expected. During this whole review process I've got my app rejected three times. Funniest reason was because, according to the tester, uh, Super Cat Tales 2 was a, pun not intended, a copycat of the original Super Cat Tales. So they basically thought that I was uh, ripping off Super Cat Tales, and uh, you know, this was very annoying as I felt that I was in charge of my own game. But fortunately I was able to fix this by sending to them a document proving that I am the, uh, you know, that I own the rights of Super Cat Tales. I have now submitted a new build, hoping that this time I'll finally get Super Cat Tales to approve to be published to the App Store. I know people at Apple want to make sure apps respect their guidelines, but I'd really wish for a faster review process. Okay, let's start to talk about the main topic of today's video. How to design levels for platform games. I'm gonna use the levels of Super Cat Tales 2 as an example, but the same concept can easily be applied to other platform games as well. The whole design process won't be linked to any game engine in particular, meaning that the same steps can easily be applied to any technology available today. Let's start with the first part, sketching. By sketching I mean starting to design a rough structure and ambience of your platform level. Be sure to give some time to this step, as the good ideas usually start flowing very nicely after a while. I usually sketch my levels on paper. Another important part of this step is to come up with a theme for your levels. For example, in Super Cat Tales 2, World 1-3 is called Turnip Fields. This means that instead of taking place on a generic green field, it takes place on a specific garden with turnips. Coming up with a specific theme helps you a lot to give a context to your platform level. For example, after coming up with such context revolving around a garden of turnips, I was able to add many simple but nice details like sprinklers, scarecrows, or turnips coming out of the ground. Once I finished sketching, I moved to the second part, creating assets. For this part, I use my favorite pixel art program, GraphicScale. During this phase, I turn my ideas I previously sketched into computer graphics that I'll be using inside the game. I usually do many tests and try different colors until I'm happy with the results. I also create enemies or other decorations and place them in the level to see if they look good. After I'm happy with the assets I created, I usually split them into tiles that I'll be saving and import to my game engine. Splitting your assets into tiles is pretty convenient as you will be able to place them into your level editor using a grid to keep everything tidy. The file size of these elements is generally very small, so I always prefer to import tiles rather than large graphics elements. The third part consists in creating the structure of your platform level. Creating the structure means placing the first tiles and platforms with collisions to create the base of your level. It's usually during this phase where I decide if I want to come up with a horizontal or vertical level. 
While I build the structure of the level, I usually playtest the level a lot, making sure all platforms are properly placed and the cats can jump and reach the platforms I want. After I'm happy with the base structure, I move to the fourth part, adding enemies and items. This is pretty much self-explanatory, I place the enemies and items into the level and I see if they work well. During this phase I might switch back to part 3 again and change the structure to make it work better for the enemies or items I decided I'd like to place. Once again, this is a phase that requires a lot of playtesting, so I run my game very often as I edit the enemies and items. After I'm happy with the enemies and items I added, I finally start making the level look nicer. This means adding decorations and the background. By decorations I mean elements that don't affect the gameplay and just have a decorative purpose. This is probably my favorite phase as it's the most relaxing and it means that I've almost finished creating the level. Now you would probably think that your level is complete. Well, this is not always true. You know, your game will feature many levels, so in the end you gotta make sure that every level is balanced and mix well among the other levels. This means that there's one last phase that I call general balancing. Well, this last phase can take place months later after you finish creating the level and consists in tweaking certain elements or the difficulty of the level. You know, it's very important to have a global vision of your levels and be sure that they all work well together. Okay, this is all for today. Thank you very much for watching this new devlog. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave a comment down below or you can join the Super Cat Tales Discord group. You'll find the link in the description down below. Additionally, please feel free to consider becoming a patron. You can find the link to my patron page in the description down below. Okay, this is all for today. Hopefully Super Cat Tales 2 will be approved for release very soon and I'll let you know about the launch date of Super Cat Tales 2. Thank you very much and see you guys soon.